you know, I think it was it was every, like everybody's reaction. It was like disbelief and you know a little bit of anger because uh, you know I sat there and watched the game and uh, you know ten minutes into the game I could tell something wasn't right. You know, I was I was screaming and hitting the house and uh, wanting Altidore to get taken off because he just it, it just didn't seem like they had the energy. They didn't they didn't have the fight to uh, to get a victory that day or to even just to get get a result. And so you know, I was disappointed in that. Um, but still, they, they with the team they had out there, they still should have. They still still should at least got the tie, and go, I went, went on to the World Cup. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, all, all the qualifying for for the United States, you know, it's through the Concacaf region, and it's whether it's the it's the Car Caribbean or it's the it's Central America, Mexico, or in it's just just not easy going down there and playing. Um, you know, I've got stories where you know people fill up bags of urine and throw them at you from the stands and it's it's just it's just it's not it's not a fun place to play now the game in Trinidad you know if we go back to 89 when we played there um, you know it, it was crazy the whole stadium was red and uh, and it was it was just a, a game that was so stressful and so intense that after the game when everything was finally done it was just we went to sleep and it was it was crazy but um, there's no reason that this this U.S. team should not have, they they should have won the game or at least go out go down there and get a tie and I know that the field wasn't wasn't the best but still with with the level of players we had and the level of team that that, that Trinidad put on the field there's no reason that we should never have got that we shouldn't have got a, a a result on there and so I'm really disappointed in that but uh, you know it was different times back in '89 when we played down there and um, you know we we were hungry uh, and that's one thing I didn't see from this team when they when they played there. And, and they and they and they you know didn't qualify. They they just didn't seem like they were hungry, and we were hungry to keep our careers going, to keep the to keep the United States uh, to, first time in, in the World Cup in 40 years. So uh, it, was, it was a great honor for us, and um, uh, it's just disappointing that they they lost this game. Yeah. Well, obviously everybody is looking at Pulisic right th these days. I mean, he's one of the top players right now, and, and at only what 20 years old, he's you know. He, He's doing tremendous, especially in Dortmund right now. And you know, there's teams that are wanting to buy him. I mean, he, he's the one that's really stood out to me. I think I thought Nagby did pretty well. Um, you know, I, I thought they struggled in, in the center back, so and, and really, really all their defense. And so they, they've got to they've got to do some upgrades for you know for for this time now that we have between now and then the next starting for the World uh, World Cup qualifying. Um, but there's a lot of young good young kids out there, and and I'm really I'm really. Uh, Looking forward to seeing how these guys do. Well, there's a, there's a lot of advantages in both. Uh, it just depends on the player. You know, some it, the, the players that go over to Europe have to have a, a, a strong mentality because uh, e even though we have had a lot of American players over in Europe, they still see us as as you know not being able to play at that level. Um, and and I think and I think. The, the, the kids that are going over like like a Josh Sargent, he's going to go to the Raymond in, in in January. He's got that mentality that that he can make it over there, but it takes a special mentality. And but then the guys that are doing, you know, the, the young kids that are doing well in, in the MLS. We've got Tyler Adams at New York that you know he's got some playoff experience now that he, he just finished with the with the Red Bulls there, um, and he's up and coming. He actually got called up for for the Portugal game too, and so. It just depends on the player. But there's a, there's a ton of there's a ton of talent out there that are up and coming, and and we're only going to get better as a country. That's a tough question because everybody's talking about you know they're 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 proponents for it. There are people that don't want it that they don't want it in this country. Um, it, it's it's tough because. Uh, it really comes down to money, and 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 now if you look at it as if it's going to help, you know, these kids uh, get to that next level, it's it, it's it's it probably will, because uh, then there's a lot of pressure on you to to play well and and keep your team, in, you know, in probably in the top league, which would which would be the MLS. Um, but there's there's that's it's a big talking point right now, and and I, I still don't see it happening within the United States within these next ten years. Yeah, well, I think they're doing it right. You know, they play 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 in Portugal next Tuesday, and they, they have called up a young squad. You know, there, there's some there's some kids in there that, that I want to see. Obviously, Pulisic, uh, but he's he's not gonna he's not gonna play in the game, I don't believe. Um, but there's there's a kid, Weston McKinney, that, that's playing in Schalke right now, and I, I scouted him years years ago when he was with uh, 
when he was with uh, Dallas in their academy, and he, he's 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 been starting for Schalke at times, and he's an up and coming kid. Uh, the other one I like is Josh Josh Sargent. Uh, he's played you know he played with the under twenties, the, the U seventeens in the World Cup this past summer. Um, he's a St. Louis kid that plays with Scott Gallagher. Uh, Back in my own my old stomping grounds there, and I'm really I'm really interested to see how he does at a at a at a full national team level. He's going to Beta Bremen in in January on a, on a full contract, so he's only going to get better. Uh, I, I want to see Ethan Horvath on goal. He's a Real Colorado kid that's been over in Europe for a few years now, and hopefully he'll get the start against Portugal. But there are a lot of up and coming kids here, and. Uh, they need to start planning for you know for the next World Cup and and get these guys experience, which I think they're going to do. And, and if they keep getting these guys experience, then I think we'll be fine in the in the qualifying for the for the 2022 World Cup. Well, for me, I, I attribute it to the academy set up in this country. Um, I've been involved with it since 2011 and keep my hands in it now when I can, just to, to do the scouting forum and. And see how see how the, the the teams and the players are progressing, and and it, it, I think it's it's been helping us because uh, you know a lot of most of those players from the two thousand or the twenty seventeen uh, sorry the U seventeen and the U twenties uh, most of those players had played within the in the within either an MLS academy or with another academy within the U S soccer, and so it's only getting better. Um, and, and and I hope that we can keep keep getting those players into those into into the U seventeens U twenties and then onto the full national team. Well, for me, really, the one right now is Josh Sargent. Uh, he's 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 already signed the contract to, to go to Germany, and and I think he'll do well over there. The, the other one, you know, is Timothy Weah. Uh, he he played well with within the 17s this year. He's you know George Weah's his son, and he's playing at PSG right now in France. And but they, there's there's a ton of talent on those teams, and and it's going to be interesting to see. And that and that's what those teams are for. Can the can the players from the U17 now make it to the U20s? Can those those players from the U20s make it to the U23s and into the Olympic team? And can those players get to the full national team? So there's a big process there, but I think for the for the players in this country and the coaching in this country that they're doing a great job. Yeah, well, the youngsters in this in this country in the last ten to fifteen years, it, it you know the, the player the player in the United States have gotten better, and that's and that's that's attributed to the coaching in the United States. There are a lot there are a lot more players within this last twenty years that have played at a high level that are now coaching the game. As previously, when when you know when I was growing up, it was like you know a dad down the street would coach, and you know we'd try and, and try to do the best stuff from there. But now there's a high level high level coaching in this in this country. Uh, the academies are doing a fantastic job with developing the kids and having them play at a high level. And with with the more high level these kids are playing at, the better they're off, the better off they're going to be. Yeah, that's that's a big talking point on who you know who's. There's a lot of guys that I that my ex teammates that are that are running now. Um, for me, you know, Sunil Galati's done a great job in U.S. soccer, and um, it's you know, on the business side of it, he's done a great job. Now, may, can they maybe maybe have a have a separate position um, that that takes care of the soccer side of it? Maybe maybe that's what some of these guys you know, like an Eric Ronaldo, uh, you know, Tony or. Uh, Whoever else is the other guys that I've that I've been playing with are, are there. Um, but, uh, it, it's going to be interesting who wins this thing. But I think I think Sunil's done a great job, and I, I would want him to stay in there.